Hey, it's William Christopher Ford. In this episode of 52 Masters, I get to do something kind of cool. I am a black belt in Okinawan Shorinru Karate, uh, specifically the Kobayashi lineage. And today, I get to train with somebody who also teaches this very same style. His name is Sensei Marcus McCammon, and I'm very excited about training with him today. That being said, let's get to training. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shorin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There were some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. Good. 
useless. Very good. Right. Hey! One. Right into that Jonah socket. Two. Bottom fist across the temple. Up here. Bottom fist. And three. Into the ribs. Into the shoulder socket. Okay? Two. Boom. Across the temple. Three. In, into the ribs. Okay? This is my neck watch. Neck watch. This hand comes here. And there's the next sequence. Right? Yes? Yes, yes sir. The neck wash is actually a transitional stance. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. So my, my belief is that neck is generally transitional. Right. Okay. So uh, when I was young, my first sensei would fight from neck wash. Mm. He would use this when you attack, he would stand here, when you attack, he would fall back. Right. He would lose, use his go forward to punch. When we do kata, like basic taikyoku kata or fuku kata, you go here, boom, neck wash. Right. Transition. Right? It allows you to change from one spot to the next and maintain stability. Whereas you see some people would do this. If you attack someone in mid mid transition there, they have no weights. Right? Hey, thank you. Thank you. Ready? Uh, Outside show. Your show. Transition of weight. Okay, so height here, Pasa is up hot. When I turn here, he punches, I drop my weight. Here, now watch this. I'm going to plant my weight on this front leg, and I'm putting that same weight in the back of his elbow. That's what allows him to turn. Here. I throw him down. Don't try and go straight across. Everybody understand that? Nice. Yes. Okay. The natural tendency for humans, especially us men, right? is we do everything with muscle, with brute force. And some, at some point in your training, uh, you have to have an epiphany. My epiphany was sitting in the, in the, in the dojo with Hanchi Margo. And he said to me, Marcus, you look good, but you do it everything with muscle. One day your muscle will fail you and you'll have nothing left, unless you find technique. So um, we uh, just finished the training. We are in the uh, the part that I like is the interview portion with once again Renchi Marcus McCammon. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for having me. Uh, beautiful dojo, wonderful students. Thoroughly enjoyed the class and learned. Uh, three or four new things that I'd never learned before. Um, right. Love the bunkai. Now, now we did the Nahachi kata, and uh, that happens to be my favorite kata. Yes. As simple as it is, it's very, very rich, and you could like take that and like maybe have a year's worth of curriculum. Yes, you you could. think? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they say that um, uh, Chibana would say that in the old days you would practice uh, Nahachi for three years. Mm. Right. In each one to understand and truly master all the karate that was inside of it. Mm -hmm. So. I think that you could just continue to take it apart and take it apart. I've been to so many different seminars and yeah. approach, people approached it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, each Hanchi that I've ever trained with has had a different perspective on it. So yeah, I think it's, it's almost limitless. Well, um, what I liked your approach was that, you know, it wasn't 
the sideways motion, it was working around yes. your opponent, you know. So we got to see some Ashi Sabaki, yes. you know, some, some of that footwork. Absolutely. And I was like, well, I've never seen that before. That was a, a totally new perspective. Well, I've know? got to attribute that to, uh, to Frank Hargrove, oh, okay. right? So my first teacher, Hanchi Frank Hargrove, um, he, he spent a lot of time studying martial arts. And there was, uh, for a lot of the, the, the back and forth relationships that he's had with different people, one thing that you could say for sure is he studied and really mm -hmm. knew and learned his karate. Mm -hmm. And he, would, he shared with me that Bakwa was uh, one of the places where Naihanshi drew its mm -hmm. roots. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of the stance that we use, Naihanshi Dachi, is actually for moving around the opponent. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly circling around them to get a more favorable position. And the, um, the hooked in feet can be used to sweep, sweep the leg. Exactly. To sweep the leg or to trap the foot so that you can uh, manipulate him for a takedown or other kinds of attack. It's similar to the way Goju would use Sanchindachi, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's, uh, um, and Hanshi Nakaza, my, my more, more recent teacher, also had the same concept that much like uh, Goju uses uh, uh, ten tensile, right? Mm -hmm. He would say that this was our version. Of, of like Sanchin or mm -hmm. one of those uh, uh, kata that Gojiru uses to build strength. How did you, um, how did you get started in karate? What was, <laughs> your, what was the first day and I mean, what brought you to karate? <laughs> My muse, right? So I mean, kind of like the, most of us, right? It was, uh, we're talking, for me it was early 80s. I watched Kung Fu theater every okay. Sunday, sure, Saturday sure. and Sunday, right? And, uh, at the time, we lived in New York City, mm. and I said to my mother every day, I want to learn, I want to learn Kung Fu, I want to learn Kung Fu. Well, we ended up moving to Virginia, and she said, I can't find a Kung Fu school, but for your birthday, I found this karate guy, this big American guy, but he speaks Japanese, he lived in Okinawa, and he's supposedly really good. Uh, and that was this guy, Frank Hargrove. Mm. Uh, and uh, Hargrove Sensei exposed me to Nakazato Sensei. I mean, when I was 10 years old, I remember I was in Orange Belt, Nakazato came to visit the U.S. and I got to carry his bags, and I was like, I'm in the wow. presence of true, a uh, true karate god. At the mm. time, I didn't realize how impactful Nakazato was, mm. but uh, you know, from that, I've been hooked ever since. What was Nakazato Sensei like back then? Was he, was he just like samurai? Yeah, I mean, like... so, so at the time, we as the younger kids had very limited access, mm. right? He spent most of his time with the guys who were fifth down and above. Mm -hmm. But um, he was very stoic, right? I mean, very narrow cut eyes. He was, you know, kind of very precise. Mm -hmm. And I just remember sitting in the back of the room and just watching him just flail these guys around who were twice his size. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away by mm -hmm. it. What, um, well, how did you meet um, um, Sensei Brian Hobson? How did you meet him? So Brian Hobson is like my big brother. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I joined the dojo, um, he was one of the staff instructors in the dojo, so he was maybe a shodan or nidan at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you'd come in, Hanchi Hargrove would be at, at the front desk, and he, he would teach the day-to-day the -day classes for mm -hmm. the juniors or the kids. And so he became uh, kind of my icon, right? He was the most athletic, he was the national karate champion, yeah, yeah. I mean, he could just do everything right. Yeah. And we've been you know, like brothers ever since. I would come in and he, I'd be his training partner and he'd beat up on me and I'd learn a little bit. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, over time, you know, every time that I felt um, frustrated or, if, you, know, you, know, you know, there's politics in karate. If sure, that stuff sure. got in the way, he would always kind of reach out to me and pull me back. Okay. So now um, he, he is the heir of, the, of, a, of our association in Okinawa, the mm -hmm. Kyobukan. Uh, was founded by Hanchi Sei Nakaza, mm -hmm. but unfortunately Nakaza Sensei passed away in 2013, and he uh, willed the association to Brian Hobson in his passing. So he's now the Sohon Bucho, or all headquarters director. This is in Virginia. Yeah, he's in Virginia. We mm -hmm. just came back from Okinawa as matter of, about a week ago, actually. Okay. We went right, to visit right. the Hombu Dojo and uh, pay respects to the family and, and continue to reinforce the promise that we will keep the association strong in, in, in his memory. What makes um, the current association that Brian, uh, Sensei Brian inherited, what makes it so different? I mean, it seems to be very, you know, it, it's not political. It's, you know, it's based on knowledge, training, yeah. skill. Um, that was from the head yes, down, from the, head from down. the, the leadership down. Absolutely. Yeah, so Nakaza Sei, 
is the founder of Kyoko Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, Nagazawa was one of the Riji, or one of the, uh, the vice directors of, of, uh, of, of the Shorankan, of Nakazato's organization. Mm -hmm. And he decided to go off and he was going to start his own association. And he took Brian as his first student. Okay. Uh, his principle was Kyobu. So Kyo has, is kind of a double entendre. So one, the character was the first character of his father's name, Kyoshi. But it was also, Kyo means pure or Sei, uh, um, Sei is also the same character. So pure warrior is what he was trying to go for. Mm. Uh, and so he said, I want to return back to the original Shurite and his words that Nakazato taught me when he was in his 40s. Uh. He said, I want to train like we did then and I want no politics. I want hard work, I want sweat, I want blood. And I, if you get something from me, you earn it. And so that was his premise. And so when I met him, um, I told him, Hanshi, I just want to train. And so when he welcomed me into the association, he took us to Okinawa. And I, I mean, he worked me till my arms and limbs couldn't stand up anymore. Okay. And <laughs> nice. then, but then when it was all said and done, he came and hugged me. Mm. Right. And so, so he passed, unfortunately, in 2013. Uh, and when he did, he willed the association to Brian. But right. now Brian is trying to maintain that legacy. Got it. Well, it seems like he's doing a great job. I have not met. Uh, Hobson Sensei, but you know, I follow him. I will arrange that. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it because I, uh, I'm a fan, and I, you know, and I, I respect him. And I respect you, of course, too. And but uh, you know, I have a book that um, Chris Wilson yes, and uh, yes, yes. James Pankowitz produced, and it's a beautiful book with yep. all the sensei. And uh, I'm like, oh, there's uh, Sensei Brian Hobson. Yep, so right there. I've got this book, and I've uh, I've gotten uh, Neil Stolzmark to sign his page, and mm -hmm. so I've. I'm hanging on to it so that I can get Hobson Sensei to sign I will page. absolutely arrange for that. <laughs> so I bring him out here at least once a year, usually twice. Okay. And then we also, um, we move our summer training camp. So we have a major gashiku that we do for the association once a year. Okay. Uh, it's coming up in August. So we always move that back and forth. Right. And I'm telling you, he would love to spend some time with you. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I, I can clearly see also when you teach, you know, you just have a lot of love. Um, not only for karate, but for your students, and, and you have a lot of patience. You're very good with children, which I like. You Thank know, you. I, you know, I, I know some instructors who, you know, they've actually said, you know, off the record, they've said, um, I don't like teaching children, and I'm like, well, why do you do it? It's like, ah, you know, it's we, we got to do to pay the bills, and I'm just <laughs> like, the, the bottom's gonna fall out yeah. eventually, you know. But I can clearly see there's this, you know, mutual love and respect that you have with there, and you're so good with them, you oh, know. Thank and, you. And, I, and it warmed my heart when I saw that. I'm just like, oh, you know. I could, uh, I could bring my own daughter here and, and feel comfortable, you Thank know. You. Um, well, I have a different perspective on it. To me, the kids teach you the best lessons, mm. right? So getting an adult to understand a principle of movement or mechanics is usually easier because we can rationalize, right? So, I mean, the, what we might be missing as adults is maybe the athleticism as we get older. Kids have the athleticism, but then understanding how to make mechanics work and, and and, say, and communicating in a way that's simple enough for a child to digest, to me, that's where you really find your learning. Mm -hmm. So I actually learn more from teaching the kids than I do from teaching the adults. And then I take what I learned from them and, I, and that system, the systematic approach to it, and that's how I teach the adults. And I think that if it makes their training richer, mm -hmm. right? They seem to enjoy it, so. What do you think, um, you know, if you take the uh, Marcus McCammon from the day he first walked into a karate dojo mm -hmm. to current day Renchi Marcus McCammon. <laughs> what do you think um, are the three things that have changed about you? Yeah, so that's a, that's a big question. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think probably the first is, um, is I realized that it's not just about strength. Okay. okay. So when I first joined the dojo, I thought I had to train harder, punch harder, be stronger, you know, do more push-ups, kick faster, Everything to me was about power, right? Um, and I think as I've gotten older and I've tried to, you know, like I said, teaching from a little kid to someone who's in their 50s or 60s, I've, I've become to understand that, that finesse and mechanics and, um, and connecting with the person, whether you're in combat or you're just teaching, mm -hmm. you have to have an, an emotional connection with the other person. Um, I think that is probably the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. Hanshi would say shingi tai, right? right? So heart, uh, technique, and then body and spirit. Yes. And I was always body first, mm -hmm. and he said no, right? The heart has to be right first, whether it is mm -hmm. in combat, where you, where you 
steal their heart and steal their emotions, right, so that you can diffuse the situation. Or it's in your own heart and being courageous in those difficult situations, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just a different sure. perspective. I think the second thing is, you know, when I, um, when I got older, I went to school for engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to become a mechanical engineer. I thought I wanted to be this great scientist. And honestly, probably the best thing that my engineering degree did was it taught me mechanics of motion and power creation. Mm -hmm. So now when I'm teaching a class and I move from one stance to the next, so I do a punch a certain way, I can rationalize it with the physics that actually makes it work. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a kid, it was all mystical. Oh my goodness, you know, Hanchi knocked me over with his thumb. But now I was like, oh, there's actually a, a scientific reason for why that works. Okay. And I think the, probably if I were to give the last one, um, it's the reason why my dojo is called Nintai Ryoku. Uh, it's perseverance. So when I was a, when I was a young kid, um, again, I wanted to know how to fight. Um, and I thought it was cool, you know, do this jumping kick or use this weapon or whatever the case may be. But as I grew older and I found myself in adverse situations, I would find that going back and doing a kata helped me center myself. When I didn't know how to pay my bills, I'd sit in seiza and meditate. Um, when I uh, got on the job and everybody was kind of piling on to me and I didn't know how to get out of it, um, I remembered my black belt test and when I thought I wanted to give up and no one would let me. And so those things have formed into who I am today. Uh, and that's what I try to give back to my students. So my last question is which I, the one question I ask all my guests mm -hmm. is, um, you have one last day with your students and you get to impart one lesson. Mm. What would that lesson be? Wow. What, what do you hope your students take away from, man, you know what? This is what we learned from Sensei McCammon. What, what, what would you hope that would be? Well, um, again, it's the way, the reason why I named the dojo Nintai Ryoku, which means perseverance and not, you know, Marcus McCammon Karate. Um, that the power that we have inside of ourselves is greater than we could realize. And if you can harness that power, then you can overcome anything. If, if they got nothing else from me, if they, if they walk away with that, that indomitable spirit, that's what I want them to have. I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to visit your dojo today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, it's my pleasure. I uh, am looking forward to coming back and training again. I have got a lot to learn, as we all do. Yes, um, me too. But I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we, uh, you know, we've been friends, but yes. I'm hoping to, uh, you know, become even stronger friendship with you. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, this is a terrific family. Thank you. Uh, if you guys are in the area of San Marcos, which is near San Diego, by all means, come visit Sensei's Dojo because uh, you'll, you'll get a lot out of it. So once again, thank you, thank so, you so much. much. This has been 52 Masters. Once again with Renchi Marcus McCammon. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.